In this video, we verify IP flow with Azure Network Watcher. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Raldos. In this video, we verify IP flow and connectivity in Azure with the Network Watcher IP flow verify tool. Before that, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. That helps to grow this channel. Also, check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, and hybrid identities with Windows AD and Azure AD on udemy.com. The links are below. And thanks to my channel members, your support is appreciated. Back to it, network connectivity in Azure leverages many of the same networking principles we've used on-prem for years. But Azure networking is software-defined and has some differences in how we deploy and manage infrastructure. There are Azure-specific tools we can use to troubleshoot as Azure networks grow and get more complex. In this video, we look at one of those tools, IP Flow Verify. IP Flow Verify is part of Network Watcher. If you're not familiar with Network Watcher, check out my previous video for an overview. The link is below. Let's start with an example. Say we have two VNets with two subnets. There are VMs connected to each subnet. We can place network security groups at the VM network interface at the subnet or both. An environment could also have two VNets paired with network peering. Network security groups can be associated with the network interface, subnet, or both, and rules from all apply. A network security group can restrict both inbound and outbound traffic. Troubleshooting connectivity can be difficult if you're in an environment where network security groups apply in both directions at VMs and subnets. If the environment has Azure Virtual Network Manager, there could be additional rules applied at the VNet. IPflow will take those into account as well. Troubleshooting environments with multiple network security groups is what the IPflow Verify tool is intended to help with. It verifies that traffic can pass between virtual machines in Azure. It confirms if traffic is allowed or denied based on five tuple information that includes the protocol, local IP, remote IP, local port, and remote port. Some important things to be aware of. IPflow Verify is not used to test open ports or services on an Azure virtual machine, only the ability for traffic to be passed between the networking interfaces. IPflow Verify may show web traffic can flow between two servers in Azure, for example, but it won't verify web servers availability on any of the endpoints. Also, it's limited to VMs only. We can't test scale sets, load balancers, or web applications, for example. Let's take a look at how this works. To start, we need an instance of Network Watcher in the same subscription and region as the VMs we're testing. In most case, one is created with the VNet. Here's an overview of the first test we're going to do. I should note, these are made up examples just to show how it works. For this example, there are two servers and two different subnets in the same VNet. One subnet has a network security group with a rule that blocks inbound DNS requests. We want to test DNS connectivity. Maybe we want the server ending in .4 to be our DNS server. This example will show how to troubleshoot DNS access to that server. Let's go to the IP flow verify tool and see how the tool works in this situation. Here we are in Network Watcher. We'll go to IP flow verify. We'll select our VM in the subnet that blocks inbound DNS. Now we'll select the network interface. If the VNet had more than one, for example, if it was connected to multiple subnets, the network interface and subnet could have different network security group rules applied. Select the interface we want to use for the test. This example only has one. We're using TCP for this example. We're testing an inbound connection to the target VM. Network security groups have both inbound and outbound rules. We'll only test one direction at a time. We'll scroll down. The local port on the target VM we're testing is DNS port 53. We're testing connectivity from a computer in a different subnet. The IP of that virtual machine is 10.10.0.11. Some IP traffic comes from a specific local port. Most of the time, it comes from a random high-level port. In this example, the specific source port isn't important. We'll use 65,000 for this example. Once we have that updated, let's verify IP flow. I'll scroll down. It shows that access is denied. We can also see the rule that's denying it. Let's open that rule. 
Here's the rule that's denying inbound port 53 from any source to any destination. Okay, we know what rule is blocking access to port 53. Let's see what happens if we do the same test, but this time outbound from a computer in a different subnet. Let's go back to Network Watcher IP Flow Verify. This time the target VM is on a different subnet. We'll select the VM interface. The protocol is still TCP. This time we're checking outbound connectivity from the target to the computer in the second subnet. So we'll switch this to outbound. The local or source port is random when making a DNS query. So here again, we'll enter 65,000. The remote IP address is 10.10.15.4. That's the computer we want to use as a DNS server in this example. The remote port is DNS port 53. Let's verify IP flow. We'll scroll down. It shows access is allowed based on the allow VNet outbound rule. Now you may have been expecting this to fail because of the deny inbound DNS rule on the second subnet, but that's not the case. Here's why. IP flow only checks the target network interface, subnet, and Azure Virtual Network Manager rules if they apply. It doesn't check end-to-end -end IP flow. In these two examples, the DNS query is allowed from the virtual machine on the first subnet, but blocked at the network security group on the second subnet. It's important to keep this in mind. IP flow does not verify the entire path, just the network security rules associated with the network interface and the subnet it's connected to. In order to verify the entire flow, we need to test outbound on the source computer and inbound on the destination computer. Let's look at a second example. We're going to test the ability of a computer on our first subnet to access a website on a computer in another VNet and then a website on the internet. Here we are in IP Flow Verify in Network Watcher. We'll start with a cross VNet access. We'll select the VM on subnet one and we'll select the network interface and leave it to TCP. The target virtual machine is trying to make a connection to another virtual machine in Azure, so it's an outbound connection. The local port again is random, so we'll set it to 65,000. The remote IP is 10.0.5.4. And the remote port is port 80. That's the web port. Let's verify IP flow. We'll scroll down and access is denied. That's because of a rule on the target computer's network interface. Let's take a look at that. There's an outbound rule preventing port 80 access to the 10.10.0.0 subnet. That's preventing access. So this virtual machine is not allowed to access any websites hosted on port 80 on the 10.10.0.0 slash 16 network. Let's go back to IP flow verify. That rule was blocking access to a specific range of IP addresses. Let's see if we can access a website on the internet. We'll use the same source VM. That happens to be the virtual machine I'm working on right now. We'll select the network interface. We'll leave it set to TCP and it's an outbound connection. And here again, the local port used to access a website is random. So we'll just throw in 65,000. If the connection was coming from a specific port, you could specify it here. The remote IP address we'll use is 8.8.8.8. .8 and the remote port is 80. Let's verify IP flow. It says access is allowed. Let's try to open up that web page and see. Let's go to HTTP and enter the IP address 8.8.8.8. .8 and that doesn't work. That's because 8.8.8.8 .8 is a Google public DNS server. There's no active web page hosted on that IP, at least none that we can get to directly by that IP address. And this is the second point to make about the IP flow verify tool. It doesn't verify that the service is available it just checks to see if IP flow is allowed. The message on the screen only indicates that the connection is allowed, not that it will be successful. 
Environments with a lot of VNets, subnets, and VNet pairing can be difficult to troubleshoot. IP Flow Verify is a tool you can use to help identify when network security rules are blocking traffic. I hope this helps you troubleshoot network flow in Azure. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.